so with the permission of uh, our session chair, uh, can we start the Ananta Ahmed from Bangladesh? Okay, so we have uh, three technical uh, presentations. Uh, the first one is from Bangladesh and which is given by the Ananta Ahmed. So I would like uh, to give a brief introduction about the Ananta Ahmed. And okay, so Ananta Ahmed is the leading green building consultant and green building tra trainer in Bangladesh. She successfully completed uh, 26 green building uh, learning workshop with 24 uh, with 2000 participants. Successfully completed eight two days long lead green associate exam preparation workshop with 135 professionals and conducted 500 plus green building information sessions, project related training workshops. Uh, also created a YouTube channel with uh, 50 plus green building uh, videos and created uh, green building sustainable development information handbooks and a green building guide for all and created a green website to uh, practice green in personal and in professional levels. Okay, so that is the uh, little bit information and further uh, continue with the technical session. Thank you very much for the nice introduction and the opportunity. I would like to thank uh, 11th International Mechanical Engineer Conference, all organizers to create such an important event uh, in this time. Uh, uh, in this time, more we know, better it gets. So thank you very much for that. And I really appreciate that. Uh, I already have my introductions. So I'll not say further. Only one thing I would like to say about myself is I love to talk about green. I love to talk about sustainability. Uh, that's my passion. And you'll find that uh, throughout my presentation. I also, uh, it's a short presentation, as you know, uh, and I, it is very difficult to cover uh, topics uh, of indoor environment uh, quality in this short uh, presentation, but I try to put it together in a way that will enhance your thinking process, give you some uh, heads up or flag up in your mind to think little bit more and a little bit differently. So what I'll do and also uh, in, uh, in indoor environment uh, and ashray, it goes with the lead, goes with green building, goes with uh, and, uh, global warming. It all ties together really. So that's why I'm going to uh, say a few things uh, related to this indoor environment uh, today. So my topics will include introduction, uh, what is ASHRAE standard and ASHRAE? What is LEED? What is sustainability and green? Uh, green building in Bangladesh, I'll talk a little bit about that. Our time indoor is very uh, is the main topics. Uh, what is indoor environment quality? We'll talk about that. And how ASHRAE standard that employ in the green building and traditional practices in Bangladesh and benefit of ASHRAE standard employ. So these are the uh, subject or headline that I try to cover. But while I was putting together this presentation, I buffled with the information, which is uh, there's so many uh, things comes together that uh, is very difficult to put it uh, in a way that uh, separate from each other. Okay. So that's why I make this circle. There's Ashra, there's a league, there's a green building, there's a Bangladesh and indoor uh, environmental quality. So let's talk about ASHRAE. It's not for the members of ASHRAE, it's for the student that joined with us. Uh, for them, I just want to talk about a little bit. ASHRAE is American Society of Heating, Refrigerating and Air Conditioning uh, Engineers. It's an organization devoted to the advancement of indoor environment control technology in the heating, ventilation and air conditioning HVAC industry. In 2018, the organization has more than 56,000 members from over 132 nations. So I would I like to invite all non-members and students to join ASHRAE because it really gonna give you tools, give you resources, give you understanding, give you up-to-date information to do better design drawing in your uh, future project. And the standard that we are talking about is ASHRAE standards are developed so that HBC and refrigeration professionals have access to up-to-date procedure, point testing, installing, and designing hardware. So that's where the standard comes in. It helps us, it shows us, it's like a guide to do things right. 
We also, uh, ASHRAE also provide consistent terminology and information for HBAC professionals, guideline project committees, create standard. You also already know that it, it updates every three years. So you can have up to date information, all the latest technology, all the latest findings. Okay. So now let's talk about lead. I'm not going to talk too much, just a little bit, a little bit. LEED is uh, leadership in energy and environmental design is the most widely used green building rating system in the world available for virtually all building types. LEED provides a framework for healthy, highly efficient and cost saving green buildings. LEED certification is a globally recognized symbol of green and sustainability achievement and leadership. And now let's talk about green and then I'm going to tie together the ASHRAE lead and green together. What is green? This is the most uh, important part that I would like to talk about all the time. But I see green a little bit differently. Okay, this is green to me. Use only what we need, no more. Okay, understand this line. Use only what we need, no more. Now, what we need, if we want to know or what is adequate for us, Ashra can help us. Okay, how Ashra can tell us what is the amount that we should use the energy and the lighting and all that. So that's why this is related to ASHRAE. Again, think before, during and after all your activities. Think. So do proper thinking. We need proper knowledge. We need proper information. We need proper data. Right? And ASHRAE can provide with that data and information. So that is green. See how green and ASHRAE is so relevant to each other and also zero waste of energy, water, resource, material, health, time and money in all area of business, operation and life. This is green. This is the real green. Okay. So to compare our green or non-green, ASHRAE can give us a baseline. Okay. So what is the energy baseline? What is the lighting baseline? What is the ventilation baseline? What is the minimum it can provided by ASHRAE? To me, this next three slide is very important for everybody that I want to explain. I say green is the way to go, the best business decision you can make. Okay, best business. Why? Because green does three things. First, it save. It save energy, water, money. If you save that three, it save R. Green also reduces carbon emission, reduces waste, so it reduces impact on environment. It does one more thing, which is very important for the business. It, put, it gives a good health, space and productivity, and that creates profit. So green is a key to make more profit. Say, so when you reduce your waste, and that is a 100% profit, because you're not wasting it, okay? At the same time, green is not costly. It's based on triple bottom line benefit. It have to be environmental. It have to be economical. It have to be healthy. Okay. So if it's not economical, that's not a green. If you spend so much money to go for a green certificate or something like that, that's not green. Green have to be economical. All the investment into green or green process should be coming back or ROI should be less than five years. So whatever is the cost is less than five years, that's not a cost, that's the investment. Okay, so I just like to invite all the participants, especially students, uh, to think about it. Okay, and try to uh, think green all the time. And in Bangladesh, uh, we are doing some green building right now. We have already 172 LEED certified projects in Bangladesh. Among them are 52 are platinum. 101 of them are gold, 15 of them are silver, and four of them are certified. And out of this 172 is 155 are in RMG sector. Why I say how many green building in Bangladesh is important to know, because when you do green building or lead certified building, there's so many prerequisite and so many lead point related to uh, ASHRAE. That's why it comes into play. Okay, so this is all comes together uh, in ASHRAE, the lead, the green building, 
Bangladesh Green Building, all is working together to create a better environment, to create a better future. So that's the like a, a preface you can uh, say. Now I'm going to talk about today's subject. Our time in indoor. Why indoor environment is so important? Why? Very simple. We spend 89.5% of our life inside. That could be our home, that could be our office, the school, automotive, recreational center, public places, hotel, restaurant. So all are indoor. Okay, 90 plus percent time. So that's why the indoor environment is very, very important for us. Okay, so what is indoor environmental quality? Today's subject. Let's see. Indoor environmental quality, IEQ, encompasses the condition inside a building and that includes air quality, lighting, thermal conditions, ergonomics, and their effects on occupants and residents. So these are the four items, the main item, but there's a sub item. In air quality, we can talk about pollution, we can talk about our uh, CO2 level, we can talk about cross-contamination, we can talk about BOC level, uh, we can talk about how uh, smoking can uh, contaminate the area. So all that comes into the air quality. Then the lighting, what is the quality of the light, how is the daylight used. Thermal condition comes with HVAC system design and also the refrigerant that goes into the air condition. And ergometric is basically the furniture that we use. So strategy for indoor environmental quality is uh, for addressing IOQ include those that protects human health, improve quality of life and reduce stress and potential injuries. Better indoor environmental quality can enhance the life of building occupant, increase the resale value of the buildings and reduces liability for building owners. So the, what is the effective strategy improving occupants, which you are doing in a green building or lead certified building, or even it's not certification, but just to in the design process, give occupant ventilation and temperature control. So they can let them control it if it's possible, meaning they can increase or decrease it based on their comfort level. If it's possible, install more operable window so they can open it up for the fresh air. I'll tell you the, why the fresh air is important. Provide adequate ventilations. This is adequate word is very uh, uh, important to understand. And ASHRAE can tell us what is adequate ventilation. What is natural ventilation, right? What is mixed with ventilation? ASHRAE can help us uh, to put it together. Use daylighting if it's possible. Give occupant adequate lighting and control. Give them the control and conduct occupant survey to understand the process and provide ergonomic furniture which is good for their health and include appropriate acoustic design. Now this is the part that uh, relevant to today's topics a little bit more. Which ASHRAE standard is directly related to the green building or directly related to the building really? Uh, uh, because as you know the uh, green building or LEED does not have their own standard they go for the standard that more prominent, more uh, proven, uh, ASHRAE is one of them, uh, and ask uh, design team to follow those standards. Okay, so 62 and 6 are the recognized standards for ventilation system designed for acceptable indoor air quality. That include the natural ventilation, mixed mode ventilation, mechanical ventilation, uh, air condition with fresh air, all that include into this process. Okay, expanded and revised for 2019, both the standards specify minimum ventilation rates and other measures in order to minimize adverse health effect for occupant. So if we say it otherwise, that if you cannot do a good building design without following this standard, because then it might be either oversized or undersize. This is just a slide. Uh, I put it together. How should I describe uh, the numbers? Uh, and different space can have different kind of CFM per person and CFM per square feet. And also, how many air exchange you need for the ventilation for the space type. 
as you know that if we say window open window or natural ventilation doesn't go beyond 25 feet or over if it's a space deeper than 25 feet only window cannot really give you the enough natural ventilation then you need some sort of mechanical ventilation you have to do the air exchange so that's this is the slide that comes into play that time this is the most important standard for lead uh, this is directly related to prerequisite energy performance of the building okay it's 90.1 so it's basically give us a baseline of a building that how much a building should uh, use energy and what is the energy baseline so for to become green they have to become better than baseline okay so this 90.1 describe that uh, in detail how this energy baseline uh, works for the building when they talk about the energy baseline then they talk about the building in blob they talk about the uh, orientation heat gain u value of the envelope everything is coming into play uh, when they talk about it. and also uh, they have ashray created 50 percent advanced energy design guide uh, uh, to give us idea how to design an energy efficient building this is very important for the student or upcoming uh, engineers to understand and study these uh, guidelines to uh, understand more uh, in 30 minutes of time that I have, I cannot describe everything, but I'm just going to tell you this is awesome tools out there that you can use for your things. Also for the existing building, ASHRAE give us uh, energy audit guideline, ASHRAE level 1, level 2, level 3 energy audit to understand how a existing building perform. And uh, that's give us a baseline that how it's going to work. Okay. So this is the lighting uh, allocation, uh, like how which space should have uh, what kind of lighting, uh, what is the wattage uh, per space type. So these numbers gives us an opportunity to evaluate our design uh, against these numbers to see whether we are overdoing or underdoing. So this is the beauty of ASHRAE standard that uh, help us. Okay, this is another very important slide think about it that the most important part that we do as a ASHRAE uh, HVAC AC professional is the HVAC system. In total energy that we use, 39% used by the building. Out of that 39%, 72% is the electricity. Out of that 72% electricity, 56% used by the air condition and HVAC system and 16% used by the lighting. So when we follow ASHRAE standard, we can see what is the baseline and how much we can save from that numbers, that percentage. More we save, more environmental friendly it becomes, more carbon footprint reduced. So that is very important for us to understand. Also, HBC is directly related to global warming because of the refrigerant in the HBC that we have. So we are the consultant who works with this ventilation and air condition system. We have to be very aware and very knowledgeable on this subject so we can do the right thing for the future. So, and thermal comfort, again, this related to air condition. What is the proper thermal comfort of the space? It can be described by ASHRAE standard 55. Okay, it also will just tell us what refrigerant to use, what not to use. And it's also guide us same like before that what is the building in Blab should be, what kind of uh, window we should have, uh, what is how this uh, heat gain impact uh, the thermal comfort, what kind of temperature we should set for the minimum, for the maximum, right? All this coming to play when ASHRAE standard 55 uh, we follow. And 55 also will tell us what is the minimum baseline or efficiency level of the equipment uh, uh, in EER and COP terms that what is the baseline that uh, equipment we're going to use how efficient equipment we can use okay more efficient equipment we use better it gets and and ASHRAE can help us to understand guide us to and different kind of equipment with different kind of numbers so that's the beauty of ASHRAE that help us to understand all this information little bit more in little bit details okay 
this is the slide that all of us should think. If you have a badly maintained or badly designed air conditioning system, whether it is in your home or office or vehicle, it can become contaminated and potentially harmful. So it, we all we opt, we are, we have to think about our situation also, not just for the client. And this is a perfect example of what happened out there, especially in Bangladesh. But right? in Bangladesh, there's so many air condition out there. It's called split AC or cassette AC does not have the fresh air option. So that's really bad for us. And we spend so much time indoor. See, there's a CO2 level 1060 on your left and 1667 on your right, the PPM level. Okay, so the PPM level in Ashray, it's told us that Ashray told us that 800 is the max that you should have. Okay, but we are having 16, 1700, even more when it's more people in a small space. So that's why we have to have now <clears throat> in green building, you cannot have it. In green building, you have to have a air condition with fresh air. When you have a fresh air, just forget about everything else from indoor air, you know, indoor environmental quality. Fresh air is the most important part. It's related to every parts of your body, every parts. Okay is the most essential element needed to sustain our life. Overall health of your body and mind in a great degree depends upon the amount of pure fresh air we breathe. So I urge everyone to think about it. What you are breathing or what you are designing for others so they can have a better fresh air breathe. Okay. And when you have a good fresh air, this problem get minimized. Uh, the litter box, odor, uh, cigarettes, uh, fumes, bacteria, germ, viruses. This is another area that we can help now in this world. If you, if we properly follow ASHRAE guideline and properly introduce a better uh, fresh air and more air exchange, then virus cannot be stagnant uh, air have more virus. So virus can be reduced and we can have a better indoor environment. Okay. You know that in the Western world, they also have the same issue, same problem. That's why they, the, now they are talking about retrofitting everything to have a, a bacteria-free, virus-free air inside. And if we have a air exchange uh, uh, system employed in the HBC system, what will happen? We can use either ultraviolet ray or nano energy or something to create, kill the viruses before the air coming back. Okay, so that's the beauty of this ASHRAE standard and also guiding us how we can become uh, uh, COVID free or less COVID in our environment. Okay, and this is the last slide. Uh, I kept some time to answer question. So here's the last slide. When you have a fresh air, which is the most important part of indoor environment quality, Fresh air is good for digestion, is good for your heart rate, is it makes you happier, is uh, strengthen your immune system, is cleans your lung, which is related to COVID, is also give you sharper mind. Know this that our 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 brain only works better with more oxygen, and more more oxygen you can get from the fresh air. So ashray literally helping us to have this indoor environment in a way that good for our health, good for our immune system, good for our uh, thinking process, good for our lung. So that's why uh, in Bangladesh, more green building we do. Or another thing happened in Bangladesh, as you know, we already have ASHRAE chapter in Bangladesh. We are 50 plus people uh, participating. All the leading uh, consultant on HBC ventilation are part of that ASHRAE chapter of Bangladesh. And even they are not doing in the green building, now they are employing ASHRAE standard in all their design. And we made a commitment a few days ago in our meeting that we're not going to design air condition system without the fresh air. Okay, so ASHRAE really giving us this knowledge and foundation to work with and the data and uh, analysis uh, power to have an adequate uh, good ventilation system.
Another thing ASHRAE is providing, preventing us to do oversize. If you do proper HB simulation based on ASHRAE guideline, you cannot oversize your HBC system, which is another problem that we have so many oversized system that uh, taking more money, wasting money, wasting energy at the same time is really killing the environment. So ASHRAE is so important. To, so I invite again everybody to follow ASHRAE standard, uh, know a little bit about it, order ASHRAE guideline and know the details. It gives you so much information that you can do better design and better, you know, provide better service to people. So these are the yard exchange we just put together as a summary. Okay, that's it. That's my uh, little uh, quick uh, presentation. Now, if you have any question, I'm glad I'll be happy to answer it. Uh, uh, Ananta, this is Abbas Sajid. Thank you very much for that uh, uh, beautiful presentation. And uh, just to give you a little bit of background, this is uh, <coughs> being uh, done at the NED University, which is comparable to your Buet uh, in uh, uh, Bangladesh. And this is the premier engineering university of Pakistan. And we are celebrating 100 uh, years of this university. Uh, actually, it was last year. Uh, so this is this conference is also part of that 100-year uh, celebration. So thank you very much for being part of it. Uh, I was very impressed to see the number of uh, lead buildings in uh, uh, Bangladesh. Uh, so can you share with us uh, what is the main motivation that people are going for these uh, green buildings? Because we have a very hard time convincing our clients to go for green buildings. Okay, thank you for that question. Uh, as I explained to my client, I'll, the same way I'll explain to you. See, in a especially in export-oriented uh, factory are going green, as you know, and some commercial building. There's three major part. Finally, we are able to convince them in a green building, if you do proper green building process, follow all the standards like ASHRA, EPAC, and other standards that we have, and make a very passive design with a good envelope, then you literally can save 25 to 40% of your energy. That much, okay? So that's a huge number because our energy cost is going up and up and up. So if we can save even 25% of energy in a commercial building, that's a huge number, okay? So that's motivation number one. Motivation, uh, number two is uh, green building process uh, give them very good, healthy working environment. Okay. So, and they understand good working environment is good for productivity. Okay. And that's again, ASHRAE help us to create that uh, good environment. In green building, you have to follow ASHRAE to create the indoor environment. So there's two things. You save money through saving energy, water, resources, and you make more money through productivity and health of the people. So these are the two driving more, most important driving factor that we try to communicate with client. And the third factor in Bangladesh, the, it's a little bit uh, other kind of factor. One is buyers are demanding it because they want to have a, a sustainability practice in their supply chain. And our government is very committed to uh, uh, green and they are providing a lot of incentive for the green building tax credit they are providing uh, low cost financing they are providing so these all together uh, coming back another thing we have in rmg sector uh, they have a lot of migration uh, but when you have a green building the migration rate drops significantly because when you employed by a green building you cannot work in a next building who is not properly ventilated properly uh, the comfortness is not there Daylight use is not there, right? So that's why people are really now focusing on green building. And you will be very happy to know on not only RMG sector, now is the other sector is coming in. We are working with a school. We are working with a uh, apartment building. We are working with a five-star hotel. Now uh, we are working with a hospital. Uh, I'm working with the economic zone. I'm working with the electronic industry right now. So it's really, really kicking up. Really kicking up. That is great to know. Uh, have you ever had a conflict between the ASHRAE BEQ program and the LEED program? Not really. Not at all. It helps each other. And another good another good thing I want to mention here, uh, especially in LEED, LEED have multiple options. Like if you say, I don't want to go with the ASHRAE, go with ANSI. 
a similar something, you know. You don't want to go with the ASHRAE 50% design guide. Go with energy start building. So there's an option. As long as you're thinking green, you're thinking you want to do better, there's a tools. And ASHRAE is one of the very important tools, but there's other tools. There's other way forward you can go. Absolutely. Thank you. I would like to hear a question from the student. <clears throat> uh, this is Mr. Fahim Siddiqui. He is a very senior consultant uh, here in Pakistan. Okay. And after that, I'll pass it on to the students as well. Uh, Ananda Sahib, Salaam Alaikum. Thank you. I'm Balwati. Thank you. Good to bolte the party. Thank you. Anyway, uh, it was a short and sweet presentation. And I, like Sajid mentioned, uh, very impressive uh, statistics coming out of Bangladesh on the number of uh, green buildings and LEED certified buildings. I, I, I mean, I was blown away with those numbers. Of course, you've had a spurt of growth in a very short period of time and a very impressive growth. But uh, still, in spite of all of that, those numbers are certainly very impressive. Uh, I think uh, uh, even professionals like me, I'm a consultant also in the HVAC field, <clears throat> need to get, to get together with people like you who probably have experienced a lot more in Bangladesh today as compared to what we are doing in Pakistan in terms of getting LEED certification. And like Sajid mentioned earlier, we do have a difficult time convincing the clients. It is always an uphill task. It's always penny-wise, pound-foolish. Uh, very good statement you made earlier was the fact that uh, it's an investment and not a cost. So all of those things uh, need to be used also to convince our people here. But uh, thank you very much. I enjoyed the presentation. i just like to make one more comment uh, based on your uh, point, which is if, if, if we really explain to people, green building or lead certification does not cost people anything. I, 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 I reduce uh, HVAC system significantly in so many projects. I reduce uh, ventilation requirements in so many projects, so many different ways. It gives us a reduce all the oversizes. So, and if you follow the lead like integrated design process, the construction time come down 30% because we have all the design drawing on our hand. So if, if anybody put give us time, they will have no reason to refuse green building. They will love to do it if we do it right. And uh, if we need it, I'll talk about it in another, another day with the green building subject or green building cost. I'll be very privileged uh, to do it. Thank you. Well, I'll take the opportunity of asking you another question. Sure. Uh, I do believe that most of our HVAC designs are you know, conforming to 90.1, 189.1. We design HVAC systems to be green because they are the most uh, energy guzzlers. So all of the paraphernalia for getting a LEED certification is there in a lot of buildings, but the formal process of getting LEED certification has not been initiated. So today, if I tell my client who already has a finished building, that he should now retroactively get LEED certification. Is that a possibility? Yes, it is possibility. What we do in that case, we go for a ASHRAE, again, we go back to ASHRAE, go for ASHRAE level one energy assessment walkthrough, and we do a ASHRAE energy audit to find out what else they can do. I give you a good example that recently I uh, working with a project that has so much glass in their south side, southeast side and southwest side. It's a commercial building. And they have so much HBC load because of the heat gain. They only use 10 mm single glass. Okay. So after the energy audit, we are going to, um, we find out that if we put a low E film inside the glass, I can reduce my energy load around 30%. That really make the all green cost, you know, paid off. So it's, it's based on the project to project basis. We can find so many loophole so many energy wasting activities or energy wasting design drawing that can really reduce when you do the green building process and change it to okay another good thing about this like 
we work on the envelope. Yeah. Now say if you if you go into the project and you do your HBC design like you are doing, and the envelope is not right, then your design cannot really do efficient job. And if you tell them to change the envelope, they will not because you are not architect, right? So it's very it is very important to work together with architect uh, and all other uh, people, and then explain at the beginning that how to get it done and what is what is the options? It could be option A, option B, option C, and that should be a data beside it. What will be the rate of return of their money? I don't recommend anything to any people. The rate of return is more than three years. Only health related rate of return can be five years. If it's more than that, I don't even recommend that uh, for my client to do it. So anything return, a uh, rate of return is less than five years is no is no reason not to do it I'm quite so but what i'm asking you is if there is a building which is already designed well both in terms of the building envelope in terms of the electrical and mechanical systems in the building can we retroactively go for a lead certification yes again i tell you around 55 points in version 4 uh, lead EB plus OM plus 55 points relate not to related to the building. It's related to the location, related to the uh, uh, transportation, related to what plan policy they have, what maintenance policy they have, right? What cleaning policy they have, what education policy they have, what purchase policy they have, right? Do they have regular checkup uh, schedule in place? So doing that, they can get around 55 points. Right? So yeah. even if may they have a plan policy in place on that subject, they have to just see is that plan policy is, is good enough uh, that uh, lead the comment. So doing that, they can get like 55, 60 point. And of course, if the energy is good, uh, they're good at that manner. Water will be coming to play. Well, how much water they're saving, whether they have HTP or uh, rainwater harvesting, solar coming to play as a renewable energy, right? Uh, heat island effect will come into play. So there's so many other things besides HBC system in the building they can retrofit or make it up to date or just report that we are up to date and they get certificate. And that recognition can give, give them a different kind of situation. Thank you very much indeed. So the students, <clears throat> the session is uh, open to you or the forum is open to you. Any questions? Uh, Nanta, uh, thank you again. Uh, this was a very uh, uh, useful and interesting presentation. And uh, I'm sure we can just keep talking about it for a long time. But we'll have another session with you sometime, inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, everybody.